Hi, this is Kathy from the Light Pitchin Library. We've got books. We've got a nonfiction book called Aster, written by Anderson Cooper and Katherine Howe, and they traced back the Aster family in New York City. Um, John Aster came in 19 or in 1783 and got rich by expanding his beaver trapping business. And then he started buying real estate in New York, and he was one of the wealthiest men ever. And then through the years, his family, I mean, they ran society, they invented New York society. And various things happened to the family. One member of the family died on the Titanic. And the dynasty just continued until about 2009, when um, the son of Brooke Astor was convicted of defrauding his own mother. That was pretty much the end of the family, but um, they were wealthy for long, long time. Well over a hundred, couple, un, couple hundred years. So interesting. It sounds like it might be really kind of fun to read. Um, we've got Heartless Hunter by Kristen Sicarelli. It's a young adult novel, um, romantic fiction. It's the first in the series, the Crimson Moth series. And apparently there's been a revolution in this fantasy land and witches who used to be rulers and, um, you know, at the top of the heap are now hunted and need to be eliminated. So there are witch hunters. Well, the witch and the witch hunter have at some point or another realize that they're falling in love. Um, she is like a society girl during the day and at night she operates as the crimson moth and she helps save her fellow witches and then the witch hunter who's coming after them and trying to stop those rescues realizes that he's falling in love with her before he realizes she's a witch so sounds like kind of a fun fantasy book young adult novel we've got another young adult novel it's um the Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. And that author has a show on Netflix right now called, what's it called? Shadow and Bone. I don't know anything about it. I haven't seen it. But this is um, number one on The Six of Crows. It will be a series. And it's about a criminal prodigy who is trying to put together a crew in order to pull off a major um, theft. And as it turns out, he does find this crew and then they find themselves in the position of having to save the world. So, and those are fantasy. It's kind of fun too. Then we've got Grow Great Vegetables in Michigan by Bevan Cohen. And this looks really good because it tells you everything from when to plant, what's good to plant. And apparently Michigan has a lot of microclimates, so it might be very, very different in the middle of the state than along the lakes. Um, of course, it's colder in the upper peninsula. But this gives you all of the information that you need to grow vegetables, which we all need. And it's hard to find good veg pesticide-free quality vegetables. They don't taste the same anymore. The only way you're going to get them is if you know someone who's growing them or you're growing them. Um, one of the interesting things that I saw in here is they wouldn't necessarily think that it was warmer, or I would think it was warmer here than say Ann Arbor or Detroit, but the last day of, of average day of frost is April 28th. Um, in um, Kalamazoo, but if you go up to Ann Arbor, Arbor, no, Kalamazoo is May 4th, Ann Arbor is April 28th, Detroit is April 22nd, so I would have thought that it would have been just the opposite, but this will tell you. And we'll have more next week. Thank you.